Welcome back to Automation of the Week. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna show you how to build out another automation in Salesforce or account engagement or a related tool to help improve your business. This week, I'm gonna show you how to use a screen flow with conditional visibility to help you keep account data up to date. The idea is in this company, we wanna have regular account reviews with our best customers. We wanna make sure that our data on the account record is as up to date as possible. So what we can do is create a screen flow that has the most important fields and the questions we want to ask during account review. And then we can hide that screen flow until it's been 90 days or 180 days or what have you since the last account review. And we could do that with conditional visibility. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is create a field on the account record for when the last account review was so that we have a date for when we last had that. And then we'll create a screen flow that's got all of our important questions and fields on it. And then we'll make that screen flow visible only when it's been a certain number of days since that last account review. So let's get started. First step, click the gear in the upper right hand corner and go to setup. And we're actually going to create two fields here. The first one will be a date field on the account for when we last had this review or last updated the data on the account. Click new under the account object for fields and relationships and let's add a date field. Click next, and we'll call this last account review. Then click next. We'll make this visible to our standard profiles here. And we're gonna add it to the page layout. You don't have to add this one to the page layout if it's not necessary, but while we create this, it'll just be a little bit easier to see that date. The next thing we're gonna do is create a formula field. The reason we're creating this formula field is to have something to use with conditional visibility. In that conditional visibility rule, we don't have a way to say, if the date field is older than today minus 90 days, then show our component. Because we don't have that ability in the conditional section, we can do it in a formula. And then we can just reference the output of the formula. So what I'm gonna do here for this formula is just make it a checkbox and we'll say account review, and then it'll be checked if the account review is due and it'll be unchecked if it's not due. So click next. Insert field here. The first field we want to insert is our last account review date field, the one we just created. So here's our date field, last account review. And so if the last account review is less than today minus 90, and make sure that you're writing today in all caps with an open and close parentheses, this is the function that returns today's date. So what we're saying here is if our last account review is less than today minus 90 days, then that would evaluate to true, which means it would be a checked box. If it is not less than 90 days, then it is not gonna be a checked box. We could go a step further here and include the type of account, which I would recommend. You probably don't care about account reviews for prospects or competitors or partners. We just care about them for customers. And we can add additional logic here to say, only have this be true if the account is a customer, or we could put that logic into our conditional visibility settings later. For now though, let's just, uh, let's just add it here. To do that, insert an operator for the, for and. So we're gonna add another logical statement here. Insert a field. The field that we want is the type field in our case. And we're gonna use this function is pickval, which is a function that takes a pick list field and compares it to text. So insert that function. You can see it's looking for the pick list field here. So I'll just copy that type field. And the text literal should be customer. I'm gonna add that in. But this will depend on whatever values you have for your type field. So if we look at our account record here, I've got my type right here. And you can see that Jake's Woodshop is currently a customer, not a prospect or competitor, et cetera. Let's check the syntax on this. And when you check syntax, we get an error here saying the field customer does not exist. Well, I'm not trying to insert a field called customer. I'm trying to insert the text value of customer. So I think I just need to wrap that in quotes so that the system knows that this is text, not a field. Let's check syntax again. Okay. No errors in our merge fields. Everything looks good. I'm going to choose to treat blank fields as blank and then click next. Go ahead and make this visible to the different profiles. Hit next again to add it to our page layout. Let's first make sure that those two fields are working properly. If I come back to my account record here, we can scroll down on the details page 
And there we can see account review is due is not checked and last account review is blank. Let's put in a date. So if we go back a few months, more than 90 days, and hit save, we should see that account review is due checkbox get checked. And there it is, it got checked. Now let's try this one more time. Let's test it one more time by changing type from customer to prospect. Hit save. Because it's not a, a customer anymore, account review should not be due. That looks pretty good. So another thing that we've learned by testing this is that if this date field is blank, it's not going to say that the account review is due. But I think for the business, it makes sense that if last account review is blank and they're a customer, that the account review should be due. So we need to modify this formula just a little bit to make sure that it also checks in case that field is blank. To do that, let's go back to our fields and relationships on the account and pull up our formula. Account review is due. We can edit this formula. We're going to add in another you know, logical expression here. So we want this to say, you know, if our last account review is before 90 days or if it's blank and the pick list value is customer, we want that box to be checked. So we can do that by inserting an operator for or. And then we can copy our last account review field. And actually, before we paste it, let's add in the function is null. You'll find it over here on the right hand side is null. You can see inside those parentheses, we insert the expression. In our case, the expression is just the field API name. So this is check if that last account review field is blank or is null, it is going to output true. And that's what we want to see. And the last thing to do is to wrap this whole first part in parentheses so that we're saying, you know, either or, either our last account date is before 90 days or it's blank. That part is true. And then we always want that pick list value to customer. That part is true. If both parts are true, we get a checked box. If one of them is false, we do not get a checked box. It defaults to false. Check syntax on that. Looks good. And hit save. Let's confirm our formula is working. Hit refresh on the account record. And let's take our last account review here and delete that so that it's a null value. And we can see account review is still due, even though there's no value in that field. Perfect. So to summarize, we've got two fields. We've got our account review date and we've got our account review formula. And the formula is checked if that date is older than 90 days ago and the pick list value for type equals customer or if that date field is blank, is null. Now let's create our flow. If you come back into Salesforce setup, go down to the flow screen, and we're gonna create a new screen flow. Click new flow, and then select screen flow, hit create. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a new resource on the left-hand side to pass the record ID of the record we're on into the flow. So select variable, and for the API name, call this record ID with a capital I and make sure that the data type is text and it's available for input. That way we can pass that ID from the record into the flow through this variable, which needs to be available for input so we can accept that ID. Now that we've got that ID, we can add a get step here to get all of the fields from that account record. I'm going to call this get account fields. The object that we want is the account and we want the specific account where the ID is equal to the value of our record ID variable. Because all we get when we first pass the record ID into the screen flow is just that text value of the ID. We're not getting the whole record and all of its fields. So we can easily add a quick get step to get all those other values, and then we can use them within the flow. We only want the first record, and I'm going to store all the fields in case we need them. If you want to make this a little bit more efficient in the future, you can choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest to select just those values that you want to save and use later in the flow. Now let's add a new screen. And then on the left hand side, there is this option for fields next to components. Select fields. And whenever you're choosing this fields panel, you have to choose a record variable first. And we have a record variable because we chose to get the account in the previous step. So this is an easy way that we can get all those fields from the account and add them to our screen flow and it'll be pre-populated with the data from our account. And then when we make changes, it'll automatically save it to the database. Saves a bunch of steps of us having to set default values for 
screen flow fields, then having to update the record after the fact, it's, it's much, much faster. One thing to know though, is not all fields are gonna show up here. It does have some limitations. Not all data types are available. But we'll add industry, and let's add a few more. Make sure account name is correct, we'll add that. We can add ownership, and let's add number of employees as well. Click done and save, and let's activate this. I'm gonna call this account review and hit save. Now let's debug it. In order to debug it, we need to pass the record ID of an account into it. So I'm gonna copy that record ID from the URL from our Jake's Woodshop account, and then come back to our debug screen and paste in that ID into our record ID variable and hit run. Okay, so account name autofills, industry autofills, looks like ownership and employees were blank. So we'll say that employees was 30 and ownership is gonna be private company and then hit finish. Okay, so the screen looked good, but now we have a couple more steps to do. We need to actually update the account record. So in order to update the account record, we'll add an assignment step. One thing we wanna update is the date of last review. We wanna make that today. So we'll call this set last account review date. For our variables here, we wanna select that account record variable we've been using and then search for that last account date. There it is. And we'll set that equal to a new resource, which will be a formula just to represent today. I'm gonna to call this today. Data type will be a date value and our formula is our good old familiar today function. Check syntax, this function today with open close parentheses, it's gonna result in today's date. Click done. And now we're gonna be setting that value to today. Click done. And the final step we have is to update our account record. Call this update account. And we're gonna update this account based off the account record from our earlier get step. Basically, we've had this account record in our flow. We've been changing its field values, but we haven't committed it to the database yet. So by selecting that and hitting done, hit save and activate, we can now debug it. Click debug again. Let's paste in our record ID. Say ownership is private. Employees equals 30. We'll leave industry and account name the same and then hit next. And we can see on the right hand side that it updated our record variables last account review date to July 25th, 2023, and then it updated the record in one go at the end here. If we go back and look at our account record, you can see that ownership is now private and employees is equal to 30. All right, so the last step is we've created this flow, we've made it active, let's add it to our screen now. If you click the gear in the upper right-hand corner, click Edit Page, you can choose Flow from the left-hand side in our list of components and drag that over somewhere on your screen. I'm gonna put it at the top so it's really hard to miss. And on the right-hand side, you can choose the name of that screen flow. It's Account Review in this case. And then make sure you're checking the box to pass that record ID into our record ID variable. And now we can add our component visibility filter here. We don't want this flow showing up every single time somebody opens an account record. So add a new component visibility filter under record field, you can select account review due. And if account review is due is equal to true, then we're gonna have the screen flow show up. Click save and then click the back button. So right now, if we look at Jake's Woodshop, it doesn't ask us for any of those account review questions because account review is not due. The last account review was today. But let's change this. Let's say it wasn't today. Let's say it was back last year sometime. Hit save. You can see account review is due is now checked, which means up here, account review pops up. And you could add a lot more fields here. You could add additional display text to help guide the salesperson or the account manager through the process of doing an account review. But the important thing is this is here front and center until they decide to confirm this value and hit next. Once they hit next, that then is gonna update the account record, update that last account date field, then you don't have to worry about it until another 90 days passes when they have to review the data again and confirm that the data is correct. Let's just change this to chemical, say it's not private but public and hit next. That then updates our account record, changes our field values here, ownership is public, last account review again is today and our flow is now hit.
This recipe of using a screen flow with conditional visibility has a lot of different use cases. Clearly, if you have a great customer and you want to keep that data up to date, it can be used for that. But it's also useful on campaign records. If you want to trigger your marketing team to do a campaign review, if it's been so many days since that record was created. Same thing with leads. If something's getting stale, you might want to prompt the user with a screen flow to get them to take some sort of action usually to clean up that data or to move that record into a different stage. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, hit like and click subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.